and we'll wrap up, Keith, and talk about the new potential luxury tax that might be coming in. Sounds like the Premier League talks to introduce a model which basically allows clubs to spend endlessly, but then they'll be increasingly taxed and then spread to other clubs. What did you make of, of that potential proposal? Well, luxury tax has been talked about for a long time, so it isn't just a new idea that's suddenly come up. I think it's come up again because of the dog's breakfast that we've got with the present PSR situation. So people have been scrambling around for other ideas. I think a luxury tax would also be another disaster. Uh, if you look at what happens there, in theory, a club can spend 100 million knowing they're in breach of 100 million and they have to pay 100 million back to the other clubs. And so, the, OK, so that, that means that the other clubs, 19 clubs, get basically 5 million each. Um, that doesn't give you much, uh, you know, getting 5 million each doesn't help you with that other club spending another 100 million ahead of you. So actually, all it does, again, is entrench that situation where nation states like the owners of Newcastle, Man City, etc., can carry on spending uh, and then just basically keep themselves further distanced away from uh, from the other clubs. Uh, so I don't think luxury tax is the answer. Um, we've got to keep searching for a better formula. I know that this has sharpened the brains of everybody in terms of the PSR issues to make sure we come up with a better formula. And I'm hoping that we can try and find one. But something has got to be done because um, I, I tend to believe that we should be giving the owners the chance to spend if they can show they're not going to damage the club and load the club with debt. If they can do it themselves, they should be allowed to invest in, as to what they want. So luxury tax, it's worked in the NBA, partly because the NBA has got salary caps and also because there's no relegation. Uh, so, you know, we're looking at different sports and different areas and it doesn't always work or transfer and I think it could be another disaster coming for the Premier League if the luxury tax gets uh, gets voted through. So, hey, we'll wait and see. What do you make of, say, about Everton's stance? What would theirs be? If you if you compare, as an example, to PSR as it stands, would there be any rhyme or reason to support this model over the current PSR FFP rules? Do you think simply that this just does not work? Well, what's interesting is I think that it the reason why it may get voted through is a lot of the clubs would not want to hamper any new potential owner. Uh, and so, you know, it, it, you, you take a view that you either are with your present owner who hasn't got the resources to compete in the luxury tax situation, or does it make your club more attractive that you can sell to a nation state or somebody else who has got the resources? So that's where a lot of clubs have sat on the fence before. And I think that's where the problems with the PSR issues came out as well, is that nobody can really be aligned behind either, either case because... Everton at one stage with Usmanov uh, and uh, Mashiri, it seems that they, uh, you know, they, they did have a pretty unlimited resources as well. So it'll change depending on how your owners' you know, resources are placed. And I think that's what's going to decide how the clubs vote on these sort of issues. Would we potentially see transfer fees soar, Keith? I mean, I know we've seen inflation over the last few years with, with some transfer fees, but could that mean, we've discussed Branthwaite, say, can his move go from 100 million to 200 million simply because of this idea that, that a luxury tax would come in place? I don't think we will because I think that the root of it all is media values and the media money that's coming through. And we're starting to see a bit of a plateauing of those sort of areas until that media situation is rethought and redone i.e the netflix of the premier league and that they control their own money and the revenues go up from there i think we're reaching a bit of a plateau uh, in terms of uh, other major media broadcasters uh, where we are right now we saw the value per game go down over the last media deal and i think it's the media money that's going to dictate transfer fees rather than anything else and an idea like this, would it actually just widen the gap between the wealthy and the mega wealthy? I know we discussed for a while about the fact that Newcastle can't spend or that actually when clubs get promoted, they really struggle because they don't have the financial capabilities of others. Is that Would, would that just sort of increase this tenfold? I think it does. And uh, that's also why, to go to your last point, why I don't think transfer fees will go up much more because there'll be a very limited number of clubs that can afford this luxury tax. And so there'll be less buyers and less of an auction for, for key players. Uh, but I think all it does, as I said earlier, when explaining the theory behind the luxury tax, all it does is entrench at the top um, the, you know, the ones who have the money right now. But then again, as more very ultra wealthy people join the party, who knows, um, you know, that, that view could change. But um, certainly I'm all for a bit of freedom, but I think this is not the answer.
What would a better solution be, Keith, to this? What do you think would work? Because obviously there are, I think from what you're saying, basically, the idea of this makes sense, but actually how it then is, uh, you know, in, in principle it works, but actually when you do it practically, it's, it's less viable. It's very difficult to say. If, if I knew that, I'd be making millions of advising the Premier League right now, I'm afraid. Uh, I, I really believe the root of it does lie in some sort of comparison with the biggest spenders in the league so that you know you are allowed to go that far if you need to, uh, provided you do it in a certain way and not load the club with debt, which is to me is the key thing. But if you have the resources and uh, you can do it, I don't see why Newcastle shouldn't be allowed to go and do it if they want to. Uh, and they shouldn't, you know, they should be able to be within 10% of the uh, the biggest spend of the season before. So I think some somewhere like that, there is a formula that we've got to work on uh, that can allow clubs freedom, but also have responsibility in how they actually put the money into the club and spend properly.